Good morning and welcome to St. Francis of Assisi Episcopal Church here in Utawa, Tennessee. We are blessed that you are joining us today, those of you who are with us in person and those who are joining us on a virtual feed. We are so glad you chose to worship with us this day. And we are blessed to welcome finally our seminarian, Derek Quinn, in person. They burst the bubble at Sewanee and he could come down for his final Sunday of the semester to be with us. Our deacon Josh is with our bishop this morning as they make a visit to Grace Episcopal Church here in Chattanooga. So uh, prayers are with them and prayers are with Derek as he joins us today. Um, if you have not already, please download our worship booklet from S. F-A-E-C dot org, and you will find in it all the prayers, all the scripture readings, and all the music we will be doing today. And we invite you to fully worship, lifting your voices in prayer and praise. Our opening hymn is hymn 205, 1, 3, 4, and 5. Those who abide in love abide in God, 
and God abides in them. We love because he first loved us. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. for the psalm and the reading. Let us say in unison a portion of Psalm 22. My praise is of him in the great assembly. shall bow down before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
reading from the Acts of the Apostles. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, a queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer. So he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied to him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this? about himself or about someone else. Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. And they were going along the road. They came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down to, into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Aoutsus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of John. 
Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord.
You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bless God's holy name. Bless the one who creates us, redeems us, and sustains us. Amen. The thing about life is you never know when you're going to lose your mind. And so, with apologies, I am not going to wonder, or maybe that is for the better. <laughs> maybe the Holy Spirit is at work. And today is all about the Holy Spirit at work. Acts is written after the, well, begins with Christ's ascension, and in chapter 2 we go to the day of Pentecost. And so now in this season of Easter, we're kind of doing a jump forward in time. While Jesus is still visiting with his disciples on earth in his risen form, we fast forward in Acts to a time after Jesus' ascension, after the coming of the Holy Spirit, and the work of the Spirit in Jesus' followers. Today it's Philip. He has this urge to get up and go out to a wilderness road, not knowing why he was going, but following the nudge of a Holy Spirit. And so he goes on that wilderness road and encounters a man in a chariot who is reading out loud from the Old Testament. Now, this man looks very different than him. He's an Ethiopian and in great finery because he is treasurer to the Queen Candace. But despite what might be an imposing figure, the Spirit tells Philip, go to him. And so as he runs along beside the chariot, he hears the eunuch talking about this passage from Isaiah. And in and Philip says, do you want help with it? And the eunuch invites him in. And together they start talking about this passage that Philip now, with eyes opened from the resurrection of Jesus, now understands in a whole new light about how this, this image of Christ's suffering that was predicted back by Isaiah has been fulfilled. And it's not just about suffering. It's about God's triumph over death. And so the eunuch turns to Philip and says, what's to stop us from my being baptized? And in a moment, they are by water. The baptism happens. And now the nudge becomes the shove. And Philip is gone from his sight. The Holy Spirit was not only with Philip, the Holy Spirit was with the eunuch. Why else would the eunuch have been reading that passage at the time that Philip is coming to him? And in the form of the day, people, even by themselves, read Scripture out loud. Because when you read it out loud, you are more deliberate 
ask any of our faithful readers who stand up here and do that on a regular basis. You take time with it. You start thinking about the emotions that the words evoke as you do it. That is the way the Holy Spirit continues to speak to us through Scripture. The Holy Spirit is alive and well and working all around us. But sometimes we need to go back to the touchstone, to go back to remember the basics, to help us stay in touch with those Holy Spirit nudges. That image of Jesus as the vine, and we are the branches, is one that is so intertwined that one of us cannot tell where one starts and the other ends. The image of a vine was deliberate. It's not trees with limbs sticking out and little limbs off those. Instead, with a vine, it's all wrapped around, and it is hard to know where one ends and the other begins, because in the end, it's all grounded in the vine itself. And we have to find ways to be grounded, grounded in the vine itself. Now, sometimes it's easier than others. And we have moments in our lives when our prayer life gets more intentional. Maybe we're dealing with a challenge. Maybe we're celebrating something. Whatever it is, we go deeper into our prayer life. And so it was a decade ago when that night of tornadoes broke out. And the next morning, trying to ponder who to check on first, the Holy Spirit nudge drove me to my car and down a road, out to a point where one of our faithful families had lost over a hundred trees on their property, windows blown out, two of their vehicles crushed by fallen trees. And yet I'd been led to go there first. Fast forward 10 years. Yesterday, I stood on that same property, out on an area that has joined in new growth, things that survived like the dogwoods now stand out because so many other trees are gone. And as we stood there, we celebrated something that the woman of the household had told me years ago she had visioned the first time she had seen this property, that this was the perfect property for a wedding. And yesterday we held a wedding on that property. It was a perfect day. Yesterday could not have been prettier. It was a wedding of two people, both of whom had lost their spouses. And somehow, Holy Spirit nudges even though they had not known each other formally, had brought them together. It was a celebration of that mature love that we are called to in 1 John, that understanding that love is what God gives us, and we, because of that love, can offer that love to others. It all felt surrounded by Holy Spirit nudges. So how do we get there? How do we get back to being the vine? Connected people we are called to be. How do we in this time of always changing protocols, not knowing what is next, let those various challenges go and go back to being connected to God. The image of the vine was quite deliberate, if we're honest, because the vine was used in the Old Testament by several of the prophets and in Ecclesiasticus to represent 
the nation of Israel. And when the nation of Israel was not doing well, the prophets would remind them, you are God's vineyard. You are God's vine. And to make the point, in the second temple, so this would have been what Jesus passed that week before he's having this last supper with his followers. And on this crown work that went over the great doors of the temple is inscribed. Under the crown work was spread out a golden vine with its branches hanging down from a great height, largeness and workmanship of which were an astonishing sight to the spectators. So this beautiful image of a golden vine hanging down from the doors of the temple. Josephus, the Roman historian, is the one who tells us about that. And so that image must be firmly in Jesus' mind as gathered at that last supper. He's reminding them of this image and how they are grafted and grounded in him. They'll need that. They'll need that for the days ahead, the years ahead, just as we need it in these days and in these years. We have ways of doing things that help us stay grounded. And one of the writers who participated in a sermon series called Synthesis wrote, no matter what our tasks, we can start the day with prayer, meet its demands with courage, and look back over it in an evening of thanksgiving. Our days are microcosms of our lives, and no life can be better than the sum of its individual days. This brings us to the inner fruits of a life rooted in God, peace of mind, courage, maturity, as in our other ongoing endeavors, the fruit is not some final reward, different from the struggle to produce it. The product is the process. Hear that again. The product is the process. The inner fruits of peace, courage, and maturity come from the daily outer struggle we have to do the right thing. It is through this struggle that we learn that no matter what comes, we will be all right, that nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Our daily lives when we see them as the process of loving God and loving our neighbors each and every day are our product. That is our fruit. And with divine help, with the Spirit's guidance, sometimes nudges, and an occasional shove, when we are open to that, we are deeply connected to the vine that is Jesus. So in the week ahead, be listening for those voices in your mind that says, have you checked on so and so lately? For that call to stop as you're in a checkout line and look at the person in front of you and engage them, check them. How are you doing? And really mean it. In the week ahead, consider where God is calling each and every one of us to live more fully as the branch that is deeply connected to the vine. And as we do, let us know as Philip knew that when we listen, 
God will do amazing things. Let us say God's holy name in the form of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let the people see sin and joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And God, us Let your way be known upon earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. With the Lord's encouraging words still, still sounding in our ears, let us frame again the prayers which linger in all human hearts, saying, Hear us, O Lord. We are weary of war and threats of war. Let us pray for peace in our world, saying, Hear us, O Lord. We fear for our children. Let us pray for all children, their health, and well-being, saying, Hear us, o Lord. We are anxious about our security. Let us pray for an end to hunger and want, saying, Hear us, o Lord. We yearn for faith in an uncertain world. Let us pray for all who preach the gospel, saying, Hear us, o Lord. We tremble at our own vulnerability. Let us pray for the victims of illness, accident, and disaster. We pray for those on our long-term and short-term prayer list, including Catherine Bailey, Bill Barger, 
Wesley Boley, the Brown family, Mary Burgett, Chuck Carpenter, Mike Carter, family of Cameron Coker, Diane Conley, Alan Cooper, Dan Crane, the Crockett and Dobbs families, Jennifer Dudley, Ann Fleming, Margaret Fulham, Eddie Gannon, Tricia Pitts Harms, Alan Harris, Nancy Hartman, Diane Honeycutt, Joy and Danny Hobson, Pam Johnson, Judson Kirkpatrick, Madeline Landy, John Lapsy, Lapsley, the Limley family, Nancy Maples, the Martin family, Bill McConkey, Bethany Moore, Heather Ramsey, Jerry Reeser, Beverly Roberts, Joseph Sharpenko, Dave Sniff, Christiane Sniff, the Snodgren family, Phil Wallace, Gloria Weaver, Adam A. Welch, Al, Colette, Corey, Craig, Donna, Mega, Megan, Mother Pia, Sherry, Tom, and all those impacted by the pandemic. We lift them up to you, saying, Hear us, Lord. We are weary in our own hearts. Let us pray for the needs who can hardly bear to name, saying, Hear us, Lord. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Brian, our bishop. For Grace Church in Chattanooga in the Diocese of East Tennessee. For St. John the Evangelist in Eagle Butte of our Companion Diocese of South Dakota. And for all bishops, priests, and deacons, saying, Hear us, Lord. We give thanks for our many blessings for the wedding of Renee Morris and Anthony Chile, for the birth of Carter Alexander Lee, great-grandson Lenora Corbin, for those celebrating birthdays this week, including Kathy Landstreet, Ed McCoy, Stuart Johnson, Al Seren, and Josh Dobbs, for those celebrating anniversaries, and for those on our parish family prayer cycle, Cindy Morgan, Erica, Ken, James, and Daniel Morgan, Carol, and Gary Morton, saying, Hear us, Lord. We pray for all those who have died, including Casey Limley. Give to the departed eternal rest, saying, Hear us, Lord. Loving God, our Father, you fashioned the human heart. You know the needs that make it ache. Hear us, your children, praying as your Son taught us. His is the name we invoke. His is the kingdom we await. Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this love. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercy that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, 
you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. I know to go to this mic. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Derek. It has been a joy to have you with us today. Thank you, Dr. Pam Harris on organ, Kristen Herzog and Chuck Nix on vocals, to our wonderful tech team on sound, Larry Hartman, 
and Robbie Tullock on video, to each and every one of you who are here joining your voices, to each and every one of you who are at home joining our voices. I'm going to invite Senior Warden Darius Bagley to come up and make some announcements out of Vestry so that everybody knows them. Thank you, Darius. Thanks, Lou. Making the announcements here about almost two weeks after the Vestry meeting because apparently I can't figure out how to post anything to Facebook yet. Um, so it'll be all over the highlights from our, our, our Vestry meeting from April 19th. Uh, monthly pledge payments continue to be strong, which is much appreciated. Uh, so many thanks to everyone who continues to give during these difficult times. Thank you very much. Uh, building fund update, as everybody knows, we had pledges of about a million dollars. Payments so far are $919,237. It's just an amazing figure. Uh, you know, we still have more than a year to go uh, in our drive, and our pledge balance due is only $80,700 right now. So we're, we're really blessed, and thank you to everybody who continues to, to contribute towards the, the building fund. And it was worth it, right? Uh, St. Francis Spring Workday has been rescheduled for May 15th, 9 a.m. to noon. May 15th, 9 a.m. to noon, so I hope to see everybody out there to, to work around the property. Uh, work continues on the landscape design around the church building. Currently in process is the complementary work, which includes grading, drainage, and irrigation. Now, our COVID task force is developing protocol for adding services and Eucharist to include a request for volunteers to help at the services with check-in, proper sanitizing between services, etc. We're also working on protocol for other St. Francis gatherings, and more information is forthcoming. And I think that's out in the, uh, in, the in the hoot notes, right? Out in the hoot. So uh, make sure you check that out. And thank you to all help who helped make our Walk and Love shoe drive a success this year. We collected 155 pairs of shoes, 223 pairs of socks, uh, lots of foot care products, as well as soap, shampoo, toothbrushes, and cash donations, all benefiting those served by the community kitchen. And of course, the next vestry meeting is Monday, May 17th at 6 p.m. in the parish hall, and all are welcome. Do we want to make any additional announcements about services or anything, or are you going to do that? You can. Well, I don't really know them. Okay. <laughs> not, not, off the top, not off the top of my head like you do. Well, it's not fair, because I live and breathe this stuff. I am happy to announce that next Sunday, May 9th, we will begin full-time 8 a.m. services here. Now, that 8 a.m. service will not be livecast, but the 10 a.m. will continue to be livecast. And uh, to that end, we are looking for volunteers to help check people in at both 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock. We're looking for volunteers to help clean after the 8 o'clock service to get ready for the 10 o'clock service. We're looking for volunteers to read, and we're gonna go back over protocols for reading because now that we're using the sound system, it's a little different, and we can go over and kind of help all of you get a little uh, more aware of some of the peculiarities we're dealing with with the sound system now that we have it. And um, we continue to seek people who will help with the sound technology and the video technology that is covered by our wonderful sound and video people, but we could always use more people in rotation. So please say your prayers. Maybe the Holy Spirit might nudge you towards one of those and know that as you do, you are supporting the good work of this parish in worship here and in worship we share with others throughout not only our community here, but in the wider Facebook community and in the wider YouTube community. And in case you don't know, we do live cast on Facebook at 10 every Sunday, but later in the day on, you can go watch our Sunday morning service on YouTube if that is easier for you to get to. And know that those connections are on our website, sfaec.org. Your hood has come out. If you don't have one and you want to get one, they're out in the narthex. Also out in the narthex, we've just started a new Ford day by day. May is a new start. There are extra copies of that if you want one. Uh, of course, you can always do those online, but for those who like hard copies, they're available. Now, 
This is odd. I've never blessed from the pulpit here. So let us remember that life is short and we do not have long to gladden the hearts of those we meet along the way. So be swift to love. Make haste to be kind. And be generous to give. In the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.